yeah, nice. Guess I got my money's worth this time, right? Alrighty then. All right, guys, we are back working on another episode about this old craftsman guitar. Um, got the cutaway, got the neck ready to fall off. We're fixing this up and we're going to do a playlist called the East LA Cutaway. And there's a link to it right up there right about now. And it started off with an episode in which I shot the day I bought this thing in East LA. So today we are going to be talking about the part that goes right here, the pit guard. I've done a few episodes about pit guards, how to make them. And um, I'm just burning through my cards up here. Uh, right and left, but there's an episode I did. It was the first episode of the series Coveter's Corner, and we talked about Drew straight out of DC, his Epiphone 1953 Epiphone that had an issue in which the pit guard disintegrated inside the case at some time, I think, before he got it, and kind of tore up the wood in here. They melt down. That process is called gassing off. So um, these things were made out of some type of uh, synthetic something or other and just like the old celluloid binding they go through some chemical reactions after a while and they basically melt inside your case uh, and then you open up you forget about your guitar because this is what happens with these guitars face and if you've got a few of them the novelty might wear off after a bit. You're going on with life, and then one day you go inside, uh, you grab your guitar, you open the case, and you find out that the top is cracked or the pit guard has the term is gassed off, gassed off. Anyway, we're going to redo the pit guard on this thing. This is the original pit guard. It's in good shape, but we're going to set this aside, and we're going to make a pit guard, and... Um, is probably the coolest pit guard that we've ever made. Um, I wanted something themed for this guitar in particular that goes with the neighborhood it came out of. Um, there's cultural themes there. There's It's an old neighborhood. It was originally called Belvedere, or Be Belvedere Gardens when it was developed initially in 1873 and then after a series of name changes the area became known as East LA, East LA, thus the East LA cutaway. So, we're going to get to the bench, and I'm going to show you how to make uh, a pattern um, so you can replace the original one. Of course, you want to keep the original one because I'll tell you what, if you're looking for one of these, so many of these got tore off and, and thrown away, they're hard to find. But anyway, we're going to make a pattern. And we are going to um, put something really cool on the pit guard for this. It goes with the theme. Okay, guys, uh, last thing before we go to the bench. You know that when it comes to cigar boxes, I like the 60 by 6 Camacho box. It's tough. It's rough. And when I send one out on the road with an artist, it takes a beating. And, yeah, it says Sun House on there. I bet you want to know what's inside here, don't you? Uh-huh. Anyway, I did an episode about a Sun House cigar box guitar. I'm going to give you a link to it right up there right about now. But there is one other cigar box that I like, and that is a Patron box. And I don't make guitars out of them, but I use the wood frequently. It's great wood. And just a tip, if you can get Patron 7000 box, Patron 7000, who uh, says it right on the end, they will hold a license plate like this one. Michigan 76, that's the spirit. Notice it says expires May 14th. I've got a couple of May 14th expirations coming up myself. Anyway, I'm going to show you how to take a Patron box, ruin it, and make something very cool out of it. So, Okay, before we get to destroying Patron boxes, I want to point out here, this is the original pit guard. It sat right here. 
and when I got it there was a screw in this one but this one was half out everything was loose and this was going back and forth and just flopping around and you can see um, the scratches there there's a a hole for a bracket here a typical bracket that um, looks like this an original bracket comes up here attaches to here and then this went here like that so that's what it looked like so we're going to put uh, this aside for now we got a lot of work to do here there's uh, a few cracks and stuff but um, this doesn't scare me we've been through way worse than this okay so we're going to take a perfectly fine Patron box and we are going to knock the top of it off with one of these or something thereabouts so we can end up with this Next, we're going to take our original pit guard and we're going to lay it on there. We're going to take one of my election pencils. You want to be a winner. We're just going to go around. I think you're familiar with this technique. I think Mrs. Lee Bolt taught it to you somewhere around fifth grade. You end up with something that looks like this. Now, Notice I made sure that on the one I was going to use, it says Patron on it right there. Now I'm going to take this to the bandsaw. I'm going to cut along this line very close to it. And then I'm going to take it to a belt sander and I'm going to make this line disappear evenly around here. Then I'm going to end up with something that looks like this which mysteriously looks like this then I'm going to take the original pick guard I'm going to lay it right over the top and I'm going to carefully line everything up and I'm going to take this all and I am going to push down there and I'm going to again make sure everything is lined up push down there be careful when you're doing these things because this thing is worth 50 bucks easily. Now, I'm going to take a drill. I'm going to find a bit that will fit in there with plenty of room to spare. I'm going to drop it. I'm going to fumble around. I'm going to put it in here. Then I'm going to go where my all marks are and I'm going to drill down like so there and there now I'm going to flip this thing over I'm going to find out where I went through because it's sticking out and I'm going to make sure that I get rid of that scuff now this is 220 grit sandpaper and I am just going to go over and make sure that the bottom of this has no rough spots. Now the top, I am going to affix something to this. And so I'm going to make sure that there's nothing sticking up. So I'm going to sand this down like so. I'm going to use 220. And then I'm going to move up to 400 and 600 respectively and make sure that there is nothing sticking up here because I want this to be nice and smooth we are going to put something on here that is going to stay with the guitar and I don't want it peeling up and bubbling up so these Patron boxes have a nice finish on them to begin with and now we can take our rag just for this and nothing else and we want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth also we don't want this warped it will end up forming itself to the guitar but anywhere where you've got something that might stick up and not bond a surface another surface this also if you've got something pointed like that you don't want it really pointed rounded off just a tad because you don't want it hanging up on anything and busting off. Because when I get done with this pick guard, it's going to be the coolest thing you ever saw. Besides, 
your mother-in-law's house in the rear view mirror. All right, back comes the East LA cutaway. And we're gonna put this up here. That will fit there and that will fit right there. And what do you know? Perfect match. Now the party begins. Okay, pay attention now. We are going to need some water. This will do. Hey, did you hear that Mr. Peanut was involved in a crime? Yeah, he was assaulted. We're going to need an artist brush, a nice brush. You can tell if it's an artist brush, it's got some weird color on a t-shirt you would never wear, right? That's how you know, even though that's kind of chick flick teal, but it's not. Nice artist brush. Now, the secret weapon is Earl Lube Paste. Earl Lube Paste. So, we're going to set down a couple of blocks. We're going to put the side up on this pig guard that we want to coat with said Earl Lube Paste and said Artesian Brush. You with me? Okay, so I'm going to put a coat of Earl Loop paste on this. And we're going to let it dry before we put our medium on it. Medium. Man, I help you guys with your vocabulary a lot. Medium. The reason we want to do this is we want to let this stuff sink, soak in. It will stick to itself, believe me. But we let this soak in. And then we're going to sand it one more time to make sure that everything is smooth and sealed. We don't want to put whatever it is we're going to put on here right now until we've got this leveled out. So we're going to let this dry and we're going to sand it one more time. All right, that's dry. Now we are going to do a very important thing, two things here. We are going to make sure that we go over this one more time with the 600 grit sandpaper and make sure that there's nothing sticking up. We've also made sure that this Earl Lube paste has sucked into this dry wood everywhere. That's really important. Then finally, we want to take our awl and we want to make sure that those holes that we drilled are open because Earl Lou paste tends to impregnate just about everything it touches. Trust me on that. Now, the most important part. You are going to get an envelope from Austria. Do you see it says Austria? You're going to open the envelope and you're going to pull out this incredible thing here. And then you're going to take this and you're going to cut it out so it matches the shape of your pit guard. Then you are going to put this on the pit guard. You're going to trim around the edges and you're going to come up with something fabulous. Wait a minute, you want to know what's on the other side, don't you? Well, patience is a virtue, son. Patience is a virtue. Okay, so now we are going to get our brush clean. Our loop paste is water soluble and we are going to coat this on here very thick everywhere. And then we are going we are going to put our piece of paper. It's sad that I would call it a piece of paper. Wait till you see this people. Anyway, we're going to put this stuff on here nice and thick and level it out. It needs to be leveled out. We can't have it sticking up here and there, but it's got to be leveled out nice. It's got to be thick. We're going to put this on here. We don't ever want it to come off. That is for sure. Once you see what it is. Okay, there you go. Camera off. Wait with bated breath starting now. Okay, so we've got it on there. We want to make sure that we're going to 
let it dry because we are going to have to trim the edges. So I made it bigger than it was, like so, so we can trim the edges. Now I can take one of my Patron boxes here and I can put this here and I can make sure that I'm pressing down, make sure that this is clean, but I'm pressing down. I want this to fully dry. Then I'm going to take a razor knife and go along and trim the edges. This is a razor knife. This is not a razor knife. Any questions? Okay. All right, guys, you ready to see something really cool? You sure? All right. Matchbook of the episode, Dunlap Department Store. Where? That's right, East L.A. What are you going to get there? Your headlights, shrunk overalls. Headlights, overalls, my favorite. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Just had to do it, but now we're going to find out what was in that envelope from Austria. You ready? Let's pull back this original. Focus your eyes right in this area right here between this area here and this area here and this area here and this area here. Ready? Drum roll please. Ooh, look at that. I need to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see Oh, I got the right zoom in. Would you look at that? That is a custom pit guard with a custom design on it. And there's a name right here. It says Bompard. Bompard. Laurent Bompard did this for me. Let's talk a little bit about Laurent Bompard and how I came across this envelope coming all the way from Austria. Okay, Laurent Bompard. You know, we can't ever just jump right into it because there's a lot behind this. Um, the story starts off with me seeing this guitar here. Yeah, I put it right here where you can look at this and... and um, this guitar's got so far to go. There's so much to do on it. Um, it's going to keep the things that are important, like the headstock and the finish and stuff. But there's a lot going to happen here. It's going to have sound. It's going to have... Um, anyway, don't want to ruin it. The neck will be covered up. It'll, it'll be junk piled out like most of them. But the important part about my guitars to me is that they're all individual. So back to this. I see this pop up. And I know for the price, and I know 
for what it is, I want it. There's not a lot of people that will dive into something with the binding, half gone, the neck broken off, and uh, the body is through what it's been through. But this, like the area it has come from, or that it came from, ha is rich in history. I would like to know what this guitar has seen. I want to tell you a little bit about East LA. As I told you earlier, it was the first development there, or subdivision, was a Belvedere in 1873. So, the area is Latin American. It is out of areas that are populated with 100,000 people and where it has the highest density of any city in the United States. So, the food, the architecture, the crafts, the industry, everything is steeped in Latin American culture. It's a great place to go. You can't find better food and more friendly people. Um, it has residential areas, it has commercial areas, it has industrial areas, it has a lot of different things. So, when I found out where this guitar was, I filmed that opening episode and I think I gave you a link up there where I introduced the guitar to you. And I started looking around thinking, how can I capture what this area is about? Now there's some colors that we typically uh, relate to Latin American culture. Uh, you'll see reds, you'll see greens and you will see yellows. If you look here, I see that. So, I was thinking, I've got this pick guard. Pick guard's on it, it's hanging off, it's rocking back and forth, scratching up. Now, I know that people like to have these, they like to put them back on, they like to restore them, but you and I both know that someday, it might be 20 years from now, it might be 50 years from now, this is gonna be in a closet, and Somebody's going to open up the case, and this will be melted all over here, kind of like Drew's uh, 53 Epiphone arch top. So, I started thinking, what am I going to do to replace this and to give it something significant that blends in with the guitar but helps me capture the theme I'm after? So, I'm looking at my old standby stuff, um, my material that I typically make pit guards out of. I'm thinking mm, black isn't going to do it for me. Um, drummer uh, from the band Kicks, K-I-X, blow my fuse, check that one out. Um, uh, hair band Leotard Tiger Stripe. No, that's not going to work. So I'm thinking, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I get this comment on one of my videos. And the comment said something like, I wonder what it would be like to apprentice in your shop. And I thought, you know what? This is some kind of crazy. I don't even want to be in my shop with myself sometimes, but this is some kind of crazy. So I had to track down who this person was. And they had kind of an odd name, uh, their tag on their comment. So I tracked it down. I find this guy named Laurent Bompart. He has been in Europe, he's been different places, but he's currently in Australia. Excuse me, Laurent, that's Austria. A little bit different. No eucalyptus trees in Austria, but everything else is exactly the same, right? Anyway, where were we? So, I track down Laurent Bompart, and I find out that he is a graphic artist and his art is kind of like, in my mind, M.C. Escher without the cartoon part. Um, he sets up cameras and he takes pictures of industrial complexes and buildings and does certain things with the camera. So he ends up with layers of pictures turned slightly uh, or whatever. And then he's able to color the different layers. This is like CAD stuff and whatever but he makes the most impressive industrial graphic art that I'd seen in a long time. So I get a hold of Laurent Bompard and I said, listen, I've got an idea. I want to put some of your artwork on one of my guitars. Now, he makes guitars kind of like some of us do out of different things. Um, you'll be able to catch up with all that. I'm going to give you a link to his site below, right below. You want to click on that. You want to check out his artwork. He's got all different kinds of stuff. It follows a theme. 
again, some of the cube stuff he does and the cathedral stuff, it, it, it kind of gives you a little bit of M.C. Escher, but again, it's not cartoonish. This is the kind of stuff that you would walk into a big, huge building in Beverly Hills where somebody had to supply the art, uh, the public art requirement, and you'd see one of these big, huge uh, things. It, that's the kind of quality work he does. I don't want to represent that he comes along and is dying to put his work on my cigar box or coffee can. That's not it. I was very fortunate I got a hold of him. I traced uh, this out, and this is what was in the envelope. I just mounted onto a piece of wood, but this is incredible. I want to end this episode by thanking Laurent. I want to give you his contact information. I'm going to kind of encourage Laurent to make his work available to some of us that would like to see it on something unique. A lot of us have unique uh, arch top guitars that are going to go nowhere, and we would really appreciate uh, something different and unique that people like Laurent would give us. Now, I'm going to give you a link up here right about now. Uh, to a YouTube episode, something about Laurent and his work. Um, but I'm going to close this episode out by letting you know that I'm really happy that this is the first thing that I've put onto this guitar. Again, a lot of work to do. You'll see it again. Uh, and we're going to put this episode into the playlist called East LA Cutaway, and it's up there as well. So, hey, Laurent, thank you. I couldn't be happier with this, and I hope that some of you will reach out, tell Laurent, I like your work, and maybe he's got something hiding there for you. Um, that said, see you next time.